everyone. And for today's topic, we are going to talk about the chemical reaction that happens in Airbus. By the way, we are the group today from Great Ten Excellence. I am Audrey David, and here is my co-reporter, which is John Paul Amogis. Let's now go to the what to learn in this topic. First is what is chemical reaction, what is car airbag, the types of chemical reaction, how does the chemical reaction in airbags occur, evidence is observed in the chemical reaction of car airbags, importances of having car airbags, and how does the presence of an airbag actually protect you. And also, do airbags really save lives? We are going to answer that in a few minutes. For this topic about what is chemical reaction, here is John Paul Amogis. What is a chemical reaction? A chemical reaction is a process in which one or more substances, the reactants, are converted to one or more different substances, which are the products. Substances are either chemical elements or compounds. A chemical reaction will reduce the constituent atoms of the reactants to create different substances as products. So, what is a car airbag? The airbag is a vehicle safety device. It is a restraining device to inflate rapidly during an automobile collision. This prevents the driver and passenger from striking the steering wheel or a window. Let's now go to the type of chemical reaction. Airbags are not inflated from some compressed gas source, but rather from the products of a chemical reaction. The chemical at the heart of the airbag reaction is called sodium azide or NaN3. Take note of that. So let's take a look at the picture. Example is an airbag inflation. Our product here is sodium azide, which is NaN3 and it decomposes into sodium and nitrogen. So as you can see, it has a coefficient or stoichiometric coefficient which is number 2. And the sodium here has also coefficient 2. And the nitrogen has also co coefficient 2. Ma makikita niyo dito na sa left side, meron tayong dalawang sodium dahil i-distribute natin itong coefficient na 2 dito sa sodium so, magkakaroon tayo ng dalawang sodium and i-distribute din natin to sa um, nitrogen. So, 2 times the subscript 3 will be 6 nitrogen. Now, dito naman tayo. Since may invisible 1 tayo dito, 2 times the subscript 1 will be 2 sodium. So, kaparehas. And then, dito sa subscript na to ay 2. So, kailangan natin siya i-multiply sa 3 para uh, makakuha tayo ng 6 na nitrogen. So as you can see, as you can observe, pantay na sila. Kaya nagdadagdag tayo ng mga stoichiometric na coefficient. So now, multiply sodium on right side by 2 to balance sodium. So ayun nga yung ginawa natin. Binalance natin siya kaya naglagay tayo ng mga uh, coefficient. Now, the equation is balance. Okay. Next. Evidence observed in the chemical reaction of airbags. The chemical at the heart of airbag reaction is called sodium azide or NaA, NaN3, which I tackled earlier. Crashes trip sensors in cars that send an electric signal to an igniter, and then the heat generated causes, causes sodium azide to decompose. Kanina nga, pinakita ko yung, um, which is anditor, and pinakita ko na ang nangyayari or ang type of chemical reaction ay the decomposition since andito yung product and ito yung kinalabasan into sodium metal and nitrogen gas which inflates the car's airbags. Normally, something blowing up in your face is definitely bad. But right about now, this chemical reaction could very well save your life. It takes 50 milliseconds for you to hit the steering wheel in a crash. Everything we're about to tell you goes down even faster. Your car has to be able to detect when a potentially deadly crash is happening. You don't want your airbag deploying every time you hit a pothole or get in a fender bender. Your car has an accelerometer, several actually in case one fails or goes off by mistake, that detects sudden, rapid changes in velocity. In one model, a ball bearing is normally held in place by a magnet, but in a crash, it comes flying free, and it flies right into an electrical circuit that tells the car's computer to deploy the airbags. Airbags don't just fill with gas like a balloon blowing up. That would be way too slow. The gas that fills airbags is actually produced by a chemical reaction. The classic example is sodium azide, which is stable until it's heated. In a crash, a small explosive or heating element called a squib goes off and ignites the sodium azide, which decomposes quickly to nitrogen gas and sodium metal. 
that sodium metal could react with water in the air to produce corrosive sodium hydroxide, so airbag manufacturers include some other compounds to react it into sodium oxide and alkaline silicate instead. By the way, the technology we described is a little old school. Nowadays, most frontal airbags are actually inflated with guanidine nitrate, but it works on the same principle as sodium azide. You're creating a lot of nitrogen gas. And accelerometers have changed with the times, too. They're a little more sophisticated than the ball bearing thing. Meanwhile, the nitrogen gas is totally harmless, being the main ingredient in, you know, air. Just a small handful of sodium azide can produce 67 liters of nitrogen. And that volume of gas creates enough pressure to fill the airbag in less than 40 milliseconds. So quick first law refresher, an object in motion stays in motion. So when your car hits something, it stops, but your body keeps moving forward. And if it keeps moving forward right into the steering wheel or dashboard, that's bad news for you. So the airbag is there to slow you down more gradually than a steering wheel would. But this rapidly inflating cushion isn't actually pillowy soft. The front face of the airbag moves toward you at between 150 and 250 miles per hour. And if you were to hit it while it was still inflating, that might be almost as bad as hitting the steering wheel. To properly slow you down, an airbag has to have blown up already when you hit it. So that means the accelerometer detects the crash, the squib ignites the sodium azide, the nitrogen gas is produced, and in 50 milliseconds, it's already blown up in your face and started to wind down. Between 1987 and 2015, frontal airbags saved 44,869 lives. That's a summer evening at Dodger Stadium's worth of people, and a lot of people around to cheer, thanks to one chemical reaction and some ingenious physics. So now, let's go on the importance of having car airbags. The purpose of an airbag is to help the passenger in the car reduce their speed and collision without getting injured. An airbag provides a force over time. This is known as impulse. The more time the force has to act on the passenger to slow them down, the less damage caused to the passenger. So we are all familiar um, with the purpose of airbag naman. Na nire-reduce niya yung, or nilelesin niya yung damage na nakukos kapag nagkakaroon ng car collision. Next. How does the chemical reaction in airbags occur? Found in fascinating chemical called sodium azide, which is Na and B. Take note of that. When this substance is ignited, just like what I said earlier, by a spark, it releases nitrogen gas, which can instantly inflate an airbag. So, ang mismong gas na nag inflate sa ating airbag ay yung nitrogen gas. So, the problem, however, is that the reaction also forms sodium metal, which reacts with moisture to generate sodium hydroxide, which is a highly corrosive substance. A burst airbag could break the so, ang problem natin dito is, alam nga na nakaka-form din siya ng sodium metal and alam natin na kapag may metal and may moisture ay nagkakaroon ng sodium hydroxide which is highly corrosive. Next. Chemical intensity, however, came to the fore. If potassium nitrate and silicon dioxide were also included with the sodium azide, the only products that would form in addition to nitrogen would be potassium silicate and sodium silicate. So, all thanks to potassium nitrate and silicon dioxide kasi dahil sa kanila, kapag sila yung um, nai-include sa sodium azide, ang nag-form lang ay potassium silicate and sodium silicate. And both of these are inert, harmless substances. So now, how does the presence of an airbag actually protect? Looking at the picture, um, mas nadi-distribute yung force kapag nasa large area. Airbags protect you by applying a restraining force to the body that is smaller than the force the body would experience if it hit the dashboard or steering wheel suddenly. And by spreading this force over a large area, so mas makikita natin na kapag may um, car airbag, mas malaki yung area, kaya mas nalilesin yung force. Now, this is the question um, we have earlier. Do airbags really save lives? Now, according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration or NHTSA, estimated that as of 2015, frontal airbags have saved 44,869 lives. Imagine that. In front end crashes, airbags reduce driver fatality rates by 29% and passenger rates by approximately 30%. Coupled with routine seatbelt use, the fatality rate dropped by 52%. That's a huge percent. Now, thank you guys. That's all for the uh, report. Thank you for listening. I am Audrey Dairy, the presenter and the leader. I have here John Palamogas, which is also my co-presenter. We have Eliza Lentejas, which is the scriptwriter, Aquiles Gasa as our researcher, and Riles Garcia as our editor. Thank you for listening!